Let's take a brief moment and talk about some internet history that unfortunately is still affecting us today. You might have an email address at buffalo.edu, you might have an email address at some other .edu, uh, and that email address might look a little weird to you. So, for example, um, here are some of my favorite at Buffalo email addresses that I happen to know about. Um, so I have a colleague named Dimitrios Kutsonikolas. Uh, he's a wonderful faculty member. He knows a lot about the internet. He's very shy though, so you can't ask him. But anyway, so Dimitrios, Dimitrios' name is Dimitrios. Dimitrios, Dimitrios. You hear that last letter, right? Uh, Dimitrios' email address is Dimitrio at Buffalo dot edu. Dimitrio, Dimitrio, oh, there's no S. Why is there not S? Another example, Steve Co. His name is Steve. Can you hear the E at the end of Steve? Steve. Email address. Yep. It's almost, it's actually hard to write. It's so bad it's hard to write. Uh, Steve Steb, Stebco, Stebco at buffalo.edu. So these are just some examples. I just want to make sure you understand if your you know, email address in this unfortunately particularly affects um, some of our Asian students is something like uh, woo 102565 at buffalo.edu. Um, I just want to make sure, sure you know that the faculty members here feel your pain. We've got some issues here with our own, with our own names. Now, of course, the history of how email addresses came to look this way is pretty interesting. Um, you know, a lot of the addresses on the internet have moved into this sort of URI format, where it's protocol, um, you know, some information about the host name, and then the path, right? Email addresses have stayed true to their original format. Um, the guy who came up with the at sign in email addresses died recently, so that was actually pretty sad. Um, but, but why do email addresses look like this? Um, well, there's an interesting limitation here that you may have noticed which is that a lot of old email addresses and I shouldn't say old because this is still going on um, have are limited to having only eight characters Ah, now you see what the problem is um, so the eight characters left no room for that critical s in Demetrios's name those eight characters it probably meant there's like an already a Steve Co with an e and so this is the best we could do um, so the book you know it could have been Steven.co or Steven.y.co or whatever it is or Demetrios.kutsonikolas his name is long you might have preferred that it was just Demetrios but but so we have this sort of strange constraint which is that email addresses can only certain institutions that haven't upgraded some of their software can still only have eight characters. So why is this? Well, the interesting thing about this is that this goes back to, you know, conventions on the early days of the internet, where if you had an address at buffalo.edu, what that meant is that you had an account on a machine that received mail at buffalo.edu. And so there was an original connection between account names, um, if I can spell account, account names, and these were Unix, frequently sort of Unix account names, and email addresses. So your email address and your account name were the same. Now you may have accounts on certain uh, CSE machines, and those accounts probably are the same uh, as, as your email address, or is the UBIT part of it. So you may log into to some machine using, you know, Demetrio, um, at buffalo.edu and, and have access to that machine. But the interesting, so what, what this meant, now there's no reason that these email addresses have to have this limitation. The problem is Unix account names for a long time and still I think in some cases do have this limitation where they can only be eight characters long. And so that's where this weird restriction on email address formats came from. Now at least they're not numeric email addresses. Early in the days of, of, of email, there were email providers that decided, you know what, people like phone 
small numbers, right? I mean, everyone likes remembering these 10 random digits. And so we're gonna make our email addresses look like phone numbers. They'll just be 10 digits long at, you know, uh, CompuServe.com or whatever it was. Um, and that, of course, didn't work that well, work out that well. People like names. People like first name dot last name at gmail.com. I think a lot of uh, email addresses now follow that format. But if you're wondering why you have some strange, bizarre email address that seems like it was coerced into shape by some terrible computer program to fit into eight characters, now you know why.